Welcome back to Nihongo Kaiobi Desu. Welcome back to Nihongo Kaiobi Desu. Welcome back to Nihongo Kaiobi Desu. Japanese Tuesdays. Today we're going to be talking about whether or not foreigners or non Japanese people and non Asians can actually become friends with native Japanese folks. So let's get right into it. Yes, ultimately you can become friends with them. They are people just like any other people. They have interests, likes, dislikes, whatnot. But there have been a lot of people who have struggled. There have been a lot of people who have struggled with that for various reasons. And we're going to talk about people who have studied abroad, people who work there, whether it be teaching or something else. And we're going to talk about people who have tried to befriend Japanese people in America. So, first, we're going to start off with the study abroad students. We're going to talk specifically. Before we even get into the whole student thing, we're going to talk specifically about individualism and language barriers. So, with the language barriers and the individualism, and, and I guess individualism versus collectivism, language barriers. Okay. Obviously, with any of these three groups we're going to be discussing, language barriers can be a problem, and that's just unavoidable. It's harder to become friends with someone when there is a language barrier, especially when there other, it's easy to access other people who do speak the same language in some cases. When it comes to individualism versus collectivism, it is pretty easy to just be alone in Japan and be okay with that. Because, for one, they, when it, there's this test called the host fed test. I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's H O S T F E D E. And it's not a test, excuse me. It's a cultural comparison. I compared South Korea, the United States, and Japan. We're only going to specifically talk about individualism right now. So, South Korea ranks 17%. Japan ranks 45%, United States ranks 91%. And I compared these three groups because South Korea is right next to Japan, so they would likely be the most similar in terms of culture, among other things, to Japan. And along with the United States being that I live in the United States, so obviously 45%, that means Japan is pretty, has a good decent amount of individualism. They care a little bit more about collectivism, but it's easy. You can eat by yourself. Just like in America, you can do things by yourself, you can travel by yourself. Many Japanese people have just go around traveling by themselves. You know, that's not weird or abnormal. I even know people who have done that personally. One girl went backpacking across Europe during our winter break this past year. And obviously, that can be a good thing or a bad thing. But when it comes to students, and especially for people who work there, that can be a pretty tough thing to deal with is the collectivism. So, lastly, when it comes to language, keep in mind that not very many people speak any English at all, even the young people either. And even when people do speak English, and I have noticed it's mostly the older people in stores, like supervisors and stuff like that, you might have to repeat your question about three to five times, and sometimes even more for them to understand what you're saying. And you may not understand what they're saying back. So, yes. I tried to ask someone once when a store closed and it was tragically difficult. Umber was just for aesthetics, but it was too hot. Now, when it comes to studying abroad, how you do it really does matter. You're going to do it one of three ways, either through a company like CIEE or ISA or whatever company is local to your country, or you maybe sometimes you might be able to do it another country's company. You're going to do it through an exchange, which is literally just swapping students from schools schools or you're going to be doing it applying directly now we're just going to brush through applying directly in exchange first because they're pretty much the easiest to get through since there's not much to talk about basically when you do an exchange you're applying directly you're doing everything all on your own which can be a bad thing if you don't speak any Japanese so I don't recommend it if you speak no Japanese but if you do speak some Japanese this is good because this is a good way to go because if you do apply this way then you're under no obligation to hang out with the people that you go to orientation with at all and you might be able to take some classes in Japanese if you speak the language proficiently enough which can definitely be good because then you have an easier time making Japanese friends now obviously with the fact that Japanese people are pretty niche and into their groups and stuff being able to speak Japanese is good and the fact that you're not going to be so influenced by these by foreigners and whatnot it could definitely help to do an exchange or do a um just apply directly now now we're going to talk about the pros and cons of doing it through a company though pros and cons will be discussed linearly you'll see what i mean in a second so when it comes to funding if you don't have enough money to pay for your study abroad program if you apply to a company then they will likely have extra extra money and if you do even have enough money then you might if you still apply for scholarships or are in need of scholarships 
then you can actually just get some extra cash that you can use on the side whether it be for books or other things that you're going to need a rod. Another pro though is pre-orientation material. So when it comes to pre-orientation material they are trying to make sure that when you get to the country that your feet hit the ground that you who hit the ground running and all this information is definitely great and useful for people who didn't know lots of things and whatnot about the country so it's definitely useful this is also a con though to me pre-orientation materials and do not encourage people to research anything about the country because there are people even though they have the access to the world wide web and access to pre-orientation materials they don't bother to look up anything so for me in the pre-orientation materials there are only maybe three things at the most that I didn't know and the what they call know before you go oh, that they have with CIE and it was pretty boring because I knew most of the things but still this is good for people who are not going to do any of that information which people need to be doing information because know before you go is not the end all be all bible for helping you survive in Japan or Korea or whatever country that you're doing the know before you go for so another or pro though is orientation so orientation is there's a lot of pros and cons to this so we're gonna go deep so first there's pro is is um the friendships so when it comes to friends and school well, yeah it comes to friends you automatically have a group of people that you can become friends with this is also a con because you're most likely going to be spending a lot of time with them since you're going to get to know them after a couple of days and because of that because you know them because you feel comfortable about them and because they might be in your classes this does pose a problem because say for instance you only have this one friend and they wouldn't you to go invite you out with your other friends. Here is another con. Another con is the fact that big groups of foreigners is definitely not a, a good thing in Japan. You want to stay with a limited amount of people. Not just avoid them totally, but you just want to stay with a limited amount of people. And then they might just be going out with a group of foreigners. Now, foreigners tend to be loud and noisy on, on public chance. You know where they are because when I was in Japan, they were the ones on public transportation and doing weird stuff out in public and you no matter how much you may hate this or may not want this no matter where you go whether it be even canada you represent your entire country and you might represent your entire people i even though i mean i'm not hispanic but i might if i do anything stupid leave a bad impression on hispanic people and when they find out i'm black i might leave a bad impression on black people and africans if i do anything stupid so that that does pose a problem, especially no matter what you look like, you might you will be affecting the lives of many other people because your one bad experience, a bad experience that one person has with a foreigner can, depending like if they're white, affecting all of America or Europeans, that can reshape how they feel entirely. So like what Logan Paul did. So be careful of big groups. Oops, I would say because that can be a con. But here is a pro: English. So you already have people that speak English, and you already have people that might have some be decent at Japanese that might be easy to find that also speak English. So that can be a pro because you might, even though no matter how good your Japanese is, you might miss speaking English if Japanese is not your native language. However, this is also a con. So say for instance you are the best at Japanese in your group, not saying that you're the best at Japanese in general, and your group is not good at all or doesn't speak any at all, and they're your friends but you have to do all the translations because they don't even know basic Japanese beyond konnichiwa and I don't even know what else, just konnichiwa maybe, or, or um, arigato, it might just say arigato instead of arigato gozaimasu. That can definitely be an issue and definitely make the can definitely be hard for people who speak the best Japanese because you might get tired of translation or you might be saying like why don't you speak Japanese and then another thing is if you're only hanging around people who speak English this is another con then you're not spending enough then you're probably not spending enough time with people who actually speak Japanese and because of that you're not actually spending enough time becoming friends with people who speak the language which can be hard because if you have limited Japanese you're not picking your Japanese and you're not making it better then that definitely doesn't help with trying to become friends with Japanese people. Especially if they only just see you hanging out with foreigners, that's definitely not a good thing anyway. So then I would say, yeah, that's pretty much the main pros and cons of being a student. And a lot of these things apply to the work workplace too. But I'm gonna say make a notable distinction between the workplace beyond beyond the fact that you can become easily lonely on college campuses. So when you work in Japan, you actually have to work with other Japanese people. And whether you speak the language or not, you can become lonely if you're not used to the collectivist culture as much because the United States is too individualistic. 
I mean, in my opinion, too, too individualistic. And uh, I know uh, a sign of this was in my Know Before You Go discussions. Everybody was saying how it, how that the cultural comparison just it just paints a broad brush. But that is the purpose. See, if we weren't so individualistic, you would realize that it's not about the things that make us different. It's about the things that make us similar. And everybody, folk, a lot in America that I've noticed, depending on no matter where you come from, they focus on what makes us different, not what makes us similar or not. Whereas in Japan, it's more about what makes you similar, less about what makes you different, but kind of half and half. Now, that can is that usually poses the hugest problem, and when people can't handle that, it can be really tough in Japan. So making friends would be darn near impossible for that reason and especially for some people who work there when they're by themselves they try to go find the foreigners that also poses a problem do not try to go find the foreigners if you want japanese friends try to find japanese friends or learn language or just know the language and be fluent so yes that can be a problem so when they study abroad if they study abroad in groups and you have no chance of trying to become friends with them in my opinion it is super hard because they're usually always speaking Japanese always hanging around each other there'll only be two that'll speak any English really and, and they speak English but like the ELS students when they came from Kinki Daigaku and Osaka they pretty much did this they all say to them they, they, they were a little bit open but they all say to themselves and some of them were saying like why are you speaking English or why are you hanging out with Americans and when you had that kind of mentality already well, yeah, you already know that when you try to become their voice partner or try to learn English, there's no chance of that. So, yes. Now, we're going to be talking about my suggestions and all of these situations of what can be done. Suggestions for, for people who are studying abroad, regardless of what method you're using. <sighs> try to avoid foreigners as much as you can and try to hang out with as few people who speak English or speak fluent English as much as you can and try to her to fly try to force your japanese friends if you can just only speak japanese or if they speak english to you just respond in japanese as much as you can and even if you make mistakes like i do just keep doing it okay just have them keep correcting your mistakes or keep laughing at you and all that stuff okay so that's a suggestion for school for people who and also i suggest if you're going to study abroad there learn something about the language and actually learn some of the language before you go to try to make it easier if you're going to work there Regardless of whether or not you speak the language, try to, to see things from the Japanese perspective and try to be more open to collectivism than being open to individualism. Because individualism, while it does exist in Japan, will not serve you very well at all. So try to be mindful of that and try to fit into the culture a little bit more. My voice, I've been talking all day, so my voice is kind of dying now, as you can probably hear. And lastly, my suggestions for people who cannot be friends like trying to befriend people Japanese people when they come to America okay just take what you can get just if you take Japanese classes just try to befriend the ones who are willing to speak English to you because some of them will and it's better to not befriend ones in groups okay groups are the worst way to try to become friends with Japanese people try to befriend the ones who are not in groups who are just singular people because they are the ones who are likely more interested in becoming friends with Americans and that's usually how it works so that's all I've got for you guys today and my voice will probably be dead for Korean Thursdays if you watch Korean Thursdays because I'm probably gonna film the video tonight so bye Kriti